That's a fact. I'm trying to get to the screen. So if you look at the most charts, we've been in consolidation. That's why I was telling people like the whole market is in a consolidation phase right now. And um, we're going to start to see a breakout going into the end of this year or a massive breakdown. But we in consolidation, like you said, it's a lot of choppy up and down action in the same area on SPY. So. 330 days of consolidation, according to my, my measure. From what you see on there, yeah. From what you see on there. That's madness. Let me see. On what chart are you looking at, the SPY? Yeah. What chart are you looking yeah. at? Yeah, yeah, I mean, going yeah. back to May last year, just going back yeah. to sideways. Let me look at the weekly sideways. real quick. Let me pull it out. Yeah, since we took that drop from when we was up yeah, in like the 470, we and we dropped down. Four seventy. Yeah, that was like May. Down, yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Volatile. Market just in the same space. Same exact space. Yep, right in this area right here. Yep, right in this area. Right yeah, I see exactly what you're saying. Yeah, I see exactly. This is the consolidation yeah, on the I weekly. Guess it's the wait and see if it's break up. See, and tendencies when this happens in the market, it tends to break up after these in the market. It tends to break up. You know, it's usually the pullback happens within the consolidation thing there, and then it levels out, and then it breaks out. Like I think we had our pullback probably back during. Uh, October, October 2022. October. Probably had the pullback then. Had and the that's when we reached our lowest in the market. And we touched down to 348. We touched down and then after that, we've never and then after since that, that area never, again. We've just been breaking up that since then. And then we consolidated a little at this another level we right between 378 and 410. 378 and 410 has been the level we've been around since. November 2022, we've been in that same range. November 2022. So I think we're setting up for a breakout, especially because they keep pumping the recession fears. Anytime they pump in a certain narrative, anytime they always get skeptical about things going that way. So I think we're getting ready to have a breakout coming up. I'm looking at the weekly chart on SPY. We got looking at the weekly chart on SPY. Positive momentum. We got positive momentum still on the on the uh, MACD on, on the weekly. On the, so on the, uh, on the weekly. Let's see how that all pans out. Let's see how that all pans out. Rolling Tim. Tim, what's up, man? What's Rolling up, bro? Tim. Tim, what's up, man? What's Rolling up, bro? Tim. Tim, what's up, man? What's up, bro? Tim, what's up, bro? Tim, man. Let's stop. Talking about frequency numbers we're getting on bank lending and the, st and the status of banks. We get, we get that H8 report on commercial bank balance from the Fed on Friday afternoon. Guess what? Sharp drop off in lending that we saw over the final two weeks of March, especially at the smaller banks. You do wonder if they're making any loans to businesses right now. Commercial real they're making any loans to businesses right now. And otherwise, and business. Yeah, the most on record for the last couple of weeks of March. That's yeah. why these uh, the most these banking prints on Friday are going to be so key. Not so much for the the quarter itself, but what so are they thinking so about the, loan demand the going itself. forward? What, what can they afford to loan in some cases? And just how much of a freeze is there? And, and was it something uh, yeah, a little there? bit. No, actually, really, I was actually no. I'm lying. Actually, I didn't spend no time with nobody. <laughs> and my niece, my niece came out last week, and then that was really it. You know, I didn't spend any time with anybody on on Easter. I was solo.
probably would take a starter position on the call, but I need to see some more buyer stuff in aggression with the heat to speed up. I haven't done a deep chart dive yet. You still holding your uh, April 20th? Sunday yeah. Call? Yeah, the drinks are down 22% right now. Mm. Oh, yeah, we down a pretty decent pull back. Yeah, over the weekend. Yeah. I'm looking at the Hughes here. I don't. The spot kind of already even bounced off that level for me. So I kind of want to catch the triple teals if I can. Microsoft gave it all up. Shit. Mm. All right, let me see. Meta, Meta looks very weak. It's an interesting week, man. We got CPI, PPI. We got it all. We got all the banks reporting on Friday. <laughs> we got FOMC minutes coming to us. It's, it's a heavy week, man. Like it's really not that. Careful here. Let me pull up these reports real quick. Let me see what you're saying. Um, let me put up all the important ones. I could look at it as is. Let me see what it's showing. FOMC members speaking today. Yeah, I think that's after hours though. Short term energy outlook report comes out tomorrow. CPI on Wednesday, that's going to be a mover. CPI is going to be a mover. CPI, well, maybe, because, you know, the last couple CPI reports ain't yeah. really caused anything. FOMC minutes. Okay, that's a Wednesday is the day. Wednesday is the big day this week. Wednesday, core retail sales come out Friday. Retail sales come out Friday as well. What do you think for CPI? You think it's going to come out in alignment? It's 5.6% is what they're expecting. Last report was 5.5. So they're trying to say that CPI is going to go up a little bit. Mm. But CPI year over year is supposed to be coming down. CPI year over year. Core CPI year over year may go up, but CPI year over year may come down. Mm -hmm. So core CPI is the CPI without food and energy costs included. So that's expected mm -hmm. to go up a little bit. So they're saying things outside of food and energy um, probably are coming down in price. But I mean, probably going up in price, but food and energy should be pulling the CPI as total down, which I'm trying to think. Food prices haven't really been dropping. Gas prices, uh, so-so. And I think those are about to skyrocket again with everything that Saudi Arabia is doing with the oil supply. Mm. How they're starting to cut supply, how they're going to cut how many barrels of oil they're sending out and lower the supply to America. So for those who don't know, the CPI measures inflation. It is one of the key inflation measurements that we use in this country. We gotta see. Let's look at the history. So, last report we had came out at 6%. From 6.4 came down to 6. I say since January, the CPI has dropped a good amount since January. Actually, no. Since January, it's really only dropped half a percentage. If it drops down to where they're saying it's going to drop down in this report, that'll be a big drop. From 6% to 5.2, that's almost a full percentage in one report. That will, I think that would send the markets off to the races. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll chop around with that. No, if we come in at 5.2%, Showing that inflation is weakening, mm -hmm. markets will start start to pump for sure. 
So that's the key, key report to look out for right there. I'm about to put this in the Discord right now. Good earnings. I gotta look at the earnings reports for this week as well. Damn, I can't even get so close. These chips are cracking, man. guys um how y'all feel about the uk now saying that they're trying to europe start starting talking about shifting away from dependence on the u.s dollar how y'all feel about that you said europe trying to get away from it yeah i just saw a tweet by unusual whales this morning it's talking about um <coughs> europe is trying to make sure it shifts its dependence on the u.s dollar away so <coughs> it can increase their stability. Mm. I don't know how, how dependent are we on the um, Europeans. I don't know too much about our own. That's one of our main allies and partners. I'm sure we do a lot of trade with them. I don't know how much as far as importing stuff from them. No, I think as far as consumers, though, they probably consume a lot of our stuff. said they're doing that. China, they've been saying they're going to do that. Japan, maybe. I don't know about Japan, but I know China for sure. Let's see. The VIX gapped up. Let's see if it could refill this gap back down from 19... I think it could get down to 1927. That's the first place it's going to face some resistance if it pulls down. And then the gap it gapped up from 1841. So... <coughs> This could potentially pull back down. Let's look at the 15 minute on the spy. Look like it's getting ready to start breaking up. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking at. I'm like dollar cost average into these long term calls that I got. I catch it. Yeah, this is the level I want to catch me with. It's 406 level. It's 406.60 level I got. Right here is where I want to catch the pullback. All right, now we make a move. <clears throat> Let's get two more contracts. Almost Missed one. an entry. Let me see. After me, we put the book away. Stop playing with me. All right, so people are trading with some. The contract I'm on right now is the April 21st call, $414. So if you want to look at the contract, that's the contract you're on. $414, April 21st call. That's what I'm playing right now. On spy. If you want to play a lighter trade, probably higher risk though because you got to go further out the money. Let me see if they can. Let me 
that's going to help that a little bit with a cheaper trade. So those contracts are a little expensive. the spy contract Traders trying to catch a bounce. Let's see if we could catch a smaller contract here. Let's see, not a zero day. I really don't like zero days, even though those are the cheapest. I don't like zero days. Let's install the new rebuild. Let's see how they do it. I'll find the contract right here. Call side contracts aren't too too bad. We could get a four twelve call right now for seventeen dollars. A four hundred and twelve dollar call that expires tomorrow for seventeen dollars. And I wouldn't really go any deeper into money than that. A four twelve puts you at six dollars away, which is a pretty far stretch from the spy. So I really wouldn't stretch it too. Really, you probably want to stay around 410, 409. It'll probably be the calls, the short term calls that produce the uh, most return if we have any kind of pump and we find support at 40660. I'm going to, yeah, 412 call would be something that we could jump in on. $16 right now. Let's put that on the watch list and see how that does. Six call, I mean, four twelve call, sixteen dollars. Four twelve call, and then we'll look at a put potentially that if we could have got for a head, we got like another twenty dollars. A four oh one put, let's see which one performs better today. I got those both on the watch list now, right now. All right, let's see. Let's launch the bull. To show y'all the contract. All right, here we go. So the contract we were talking about is this contract right here, 412. On the put side, it's going to be 401, 22 dollars, 412, 16 dollars. Both around the same range out the money. So if you wanted to play a hedge play, that's the way you could play it. So I got that 40650 level. Now let's watch and see. Let's go back to the charts and see what the markets are doing. Yeah. Uh, we're rejecting around the the 20 day moving average. I think that's how I had it set up. Yeah, or 10 day moving average. Let me double check. Yeah, the 10 day moving average. Is what we're rejecting off of right now, but that's at 406.88. We break through that, then we could go towards the uh, 50 day at 408.22. That's what we'll face the next level of rejection. Let me look at what smart money and dumb money is doing. My guy Vic said he was in the A and B position. Someone else going the room? Who joined in here? Oh, Vic came back. Okay. Yeah, Vic said he's in the A and B hey. position. Yeah, I was 
AMD is taking off. Okay. AMD, I told him it got resistance at 9508. AMD can see resistance yeah, right at 90. That's what you got to level at, too? Yeah. Okay. Overbought, oversold. Let's see where we are on there. Right now, on the overbought, oversold indicator, it's breaking in. It's starting to go into a buy trend for SPY. As long as we could hold above 406.60, that's a good sign. Try to push up. The MACD was reversing. Let me change this out to smart money, dumb money indicator. Smart money, dumb money shows institutional buying versus retail buyers. So, what are these guys doing? Smart money is a little choppy this morning. They were up and down, but more so up than down this morning. Let's look at the five minute. Five minutes looking strong. Let's look at the hourly. The hourly was still in a sell trend. Let's look at the hourly on the MACD. Hourly and the MACD was still in a sell trend. So the macro momentum doesn't look great on the hourly or the four hour. So this call play may be scalpish, maybe a short term. Get out with small percentage gain. Instead of 30%, cutting these calls at 15%. If we push up. That's if you got a short call, short term call. The long term calls you could probably hold a little bit longer, but if you got a short term call, then yeah, you probably want to scalp that. Let's see the daily. Yeah, the daily's weakening too, but the weekly is still in strength. The weekly and monthly are in strength. So the daily and hourly charts are showing weakness. The minute charts are showing strength. The hourlies are showing weakness. Minutes are showing strength. And, um,. Except for the three and five, the 15 is showing strength, but three and five don't seem to be. But the weekly and the monthly are still showing strength. So I was trading more so off the weekly. I'm not really trading off the monthly. I didn't get contracts that far out, but I'm trading off the um, off the weekly, which has positive momentum behind it still. So <clears throat> which is why I had to make sure those contracts. So I'm like, I gotta make sure these contracts at least two to three weeks out, if not a whole month. Got to give it time to play. Yeah, like my guy, he wasn't doing this weekend where Adesanya slept him. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> Adesanya put him to sleep. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> that was crazy. That was a crazy knockout. I, was a cr I should post that in the Discord. I recorded. I'm gonna post that knockout in the Discord. Y'all yeah, deserve to see that. <laughs> you didn't see that one? I'm gonna no, post it in the. Uh... <laughs> hey, don't be disrespecting um, fighters, right? <laughs> Out of song, you put him to sleep, man. He was trying. He tried to hit him with a sagit combo, throwing knees and all this stuff. Yeah, I was like, that fight could have gone anywhere. Oh yeah, no, because I was talking like he was in trouble a little bit. He was in trouble a little bit. Dude was he was it making wasn't a... fine like it was a little bit. That that body <laughs> shot hurt. Yeah, he was in trouble. He was but definitely anyway, in trouble. It was a good fight. Yeah, it was one point in the fight. I was like, uh oh, I was worried about Adesanya a little bit. I was like, oh man. And then um he turned it around with that knockout. And I was like, oh. That was a good counter. He bait, if, if, if that was bait, he baited him well. We have 406.50 right now. We're breaking down before, below 406.60. So 
Let's look at the volume. Let's see what the volume looks like on this candlestick. Let's go to early morning. It started off with heavy volume this morning, and we rarely move. 104,000 favor to the upside on the first candlestick. Second candlestick, 14,000 to the upside, then 22,000 to the upside. This candlestick is only 3,000 to the upside. So there's been more buys and sells coming in on these candlesticks, which will make me expect the push up showing that we have some support in the market. But if all these buys are coming in and it's not pushing the market up, then that makes me a little worried because if sales start flowing in heavier, it could cause a push down pretty rapidly. Triple bottom. Yeah, I see that. First of all, we produced a strong wick down there early to start off. Then we doubled. Then we bottomed, and then we broke up, engulfed the candlestick, and now we about to re-engulf the candlestick. This is a choppy Monday. That's why I typically don't even like to trade on Monday. <laughs> Mondays and Fridays are usually really choppy days in the market because there's a lot of weekend shedding of contracts that were held throughout the weekend and swung through the weekend a lot of people selling and re-entering positions and so it's a lot of volatility on these days but I guess that's why we gotta use our indicators things like the VIX and other companies that we know have a heavy influence on the spot like Apple and Microsoft Apple right now is like it was tanking this morning goodness gracious what happened to Apple <laughs> it's starting to catch ground though. It's, that's, that's what's holding the market down. <laughs> yeah, that's what's doing it. Yeah, Apple's the one that's doing it. Let's see what's going on with Apple. Let's see what the news. The news on Apple. I just got a, a nine minutes ago. It says, for Apple, India is the next China. Well, yeah, that's for sure. That's another thing. I, I, India is about to get a boom in business from America. If India doesn't align themselves with this BRICS ally, uh, alliance that's happening on the on the, on the the East, then India is going to be the next place all a lot of our companies flock to for, for production, um, manufacturing centers for cheap, all that kind of stuff that they get from China, they're going to go to India for that. Like they break a place down and they they stop breaking it down and they look up and they look up the next stop. Right. Yeah, I think that's where they're headed. So it says Apple, for Apple, India is the next China. Let's see. Yeah, it wants to compete with China's supply chain dominance. <laughs> Y'all say you SQ watch that? Yes, sir. Morning, bro. What's going on? What's going on, man? I didn't even know someone else joined. Yeah, man. Just checking the chat. Just doing jobs. Got my people in here. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. That's what's up. Yeah, I'm in. Uh, I'm in Spy right now. Mm -hmm. I was looking at Spy. I'm in a Spy call right now. Mm -hmm. I'm looking to exit around like 408.60. If I can't get out there, then I'll do a stop loss for, I'll do a stop loss because I got a level on SPY. I'm down by 404.11. If it breaks below 404.29, I have a alert there. So that's the level I'm going to hold until. But if it gets down that low, that means we got Real strong bearish momentum, so I got to get out. But it looks like it's holding right here. Like I said, I think a lot of it has to do with Apple. Apple's down almost 3% today. I don't, you know, that, that's definitely going to pull SPY. They opened their first retail store in India um, last week, Apple did. That's crazy. India never had a, re a Apple store. I thought Apple was everywhere. 
I didn't know that either. Yeah, they opened their first retail store in India. That's crazy. The world is a huge place, man. It's so big. What were those lemons you were talking about? The, um, for the spy trade. For spy. Yeah, for spy, I'm looking at the, um, stopping out or take profit around 408, really like 40860. And if you get in a call right now, you probably want to stop, stop loss at 40411. But, that all depends on what length contract you're getting. If you're getting on a short contract, your stop loss has to be shorter than that. Your stop loss would do it on percentage. So if your contract goes down 25%, you all get out. Regardless of where the price is at. And on the way up, if your price goes, if your contract goes up, if you get a shorter term, more volatile contract than I got, if your price goes up to over or by 30%, I will get out at 30% on the way up. <laughs> Take your profits around there. But yeah, right now we're fighting the 10-day moving average at 406.74. It's a 10-day. We're right on that level right now. That's yeah, me too. Bear flag, bro. I'm so scared to touch this shit. Well, you feel like it's going to take down? Why don't you grab a put? Or you don't feel like you're not really sure which way it's going to go? <laughs> yeah, I don't know which way. Oh, so that's why I say you, you don't got to trade every day. That's another thing, too, man. Sometimes if, if you're not feeling it in the day, that means don't trade. <laughs> because then what you're going to do if you get in a trade and it don't go right, you're going to tell yourself, I knew I shouldn't have traded. <laughs> you're going to be like, I saw it. I knew it. I shouldn't have traded. I shouldn't have traded. Yes, Airbnb. Come back down to one hundred dollars. Yes, Birdman hand rub on that one. If Airbnb gets back below a hundred, I'm scooping some shares. I like Airbnb underneath one hundred dollar. Let me see. Any other con uh, companies y'all trading or looking at? Y'all want to look at some price levels on before I go through this list. Some names stuff. Let me see something. Watching machine life on YouTube. Gold, bear, price. Mm. And what was the last one? Definitely. What's the symbol for that? MCK. MCK. What's making you look at them? What making you want to trade them? Okay. That's what's up. So you like the um, the medical companies. You like into medical. You like medical and bio companies. Diagnostic on the market right there. I'm looking at the monthly chart on MCK. It looks pretty strong, man. I like that. I like it. It, it fell into some weakness on the momentum as far as on for April, but April just started. So I'd say March is like it was losing momentum to the downside, but it picked it back up to start this month on MCK. <coughs> and uh, it's top out level is really at 390. So if it gets back above 390, you're making new highs. That's a good sign. But uh, let me see something. It's right at a resistance line. The resistance line is facing. Let me see. So this chart is. I'm looking at the monthly on it for this one. The monthly is at the 
it's at the 10 month moving average right now. It's not a, it's above the 24 month moving average, but it's at the 10 month moving average, which is pretty much the year moving average for the year. And it's uh that is at 364.66. So that's a level that you probably want to put in at 364.66 for support. Achieve. Okay. Symbol. Oh, I see it. I got it. I got it here. This joint looks like it's been flat since 2018. Let me know. Let me look. I'm sorry. I don't know why the chart looks like that. Look like it was flat. Let me go back. It's like it must have took a big drop in 2018. All right. So. This has been trading under ten dollars pretty much since tw April twenty twenty. March April twenty twenty has been trading underneath ten dollars. Let me spread out the chart now some more and see what it's been doing. All right, so this company right here. We're gonna find a floor on them, probably around two dollars and twenty-five cents. That's that's their like bottom out price. If you want to, yeah. If you want to dollar cost average in on them and get more shares, you probably do that around five dollars, four dollars and ninety-nine cents, five dollars. That's like a psychological level. That's what them it looks like. And where they're trading at now is like the level that they consolidated at going back into June all the way through April from like June 21, June and July 2021 all the way to April. They stayed right in this $8 range. So if you see them break above $8 and if you see them break above, let me see, $8.60 essentially, then that's a really good sign because they haven't been able to break above that level since um, June 2021, June, July, the summer of 2021. So if they could get back above 850, I would say look at 860 because they're a company that at one point was trading at 200 and something dollars a share. So I don't really know the deep financials or what's going on with the company, but just off a technical view, I say wait for them to break above $8.60 before you start really going heavy into investing into them because at that point they should be able to take off and after that point they could take off for like $29, $30, $40. So <clears throat> but you're still in high risk unless you break above that $8.60 range and still a little risky up until like $18. But if it breaks over $18 then you should be able to you should take off from there. Yeah. You're still in the risk zone until about $18. But after that it should start looking uh, like it's capable of taking off. But like I said, I don't know what brought the company down. Sometimes when the company gets pulled back this low, it could be because. I think it's just those fundamentals, like their product is weak. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, okay. But they do products. They have products. When you say SPY, um, yeah, we were trading SPY right now. SPY is at 40709, 40707. It's breaking into that bullish trend, Tim. We found the support. Maybe we got the support we needed. We didn't break down. So those calls, let me look at my calls right now. Yeah, so I was looking at SPY calls, and I'm looking to exit at 408, like around 40870, 40860, right around that range. I want to get out my call. Because we're going to face resistance at 408.72. So I want to get out before that resistance. And um, I got my stop loss set for 404 at uh, around 404.27. But I got calls that expire on April 21st. So if you're getting a call that expires like a daily or something that expires a zero day, like I said, you got to just let me know and I could let you know like how to shorten your stops from there. the stock heat map let me see the heat map gives you a general feel sometimes what the market's looking like yeah the market was hella red <laughs> this morning apple was down microsoft google was down let me look at microsoft microsoft bouncing off of the bottom 
Microsoft is bouncing off of a bottom. Apple's bouncing off of a bottom. Let's look at Google next. And Google is starting to bounce off a bottom and find strength. So I don't know, you trade, you know, you familiar with the indicators like the MACD and all that kind of stuff, the momentum indicator. Yeah, I say you're familiar with like the MACD as far as the indicators on the charts. Um, you mean the moving cost average and like the high? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty familiar with that. All right, cool, cool. No, I was just saying because some people don't know. Like all these indicators and there's stocks all higher by the week. Okay. Hey, listen, man. Some apps are good for certain things and not others. So if it gave you good information and knowledge, then that's that's probably what that app is good for. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, it wasn't giving you no contracts. It was just like up or down. That's it. Make your choice. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now. Well, below. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that sounds like a rush yeah. right there. <laughs> Just like gambling, that's how they get you. They pull you in, it's like fan duel and shit like that. You know, they get you with the free, tr with the free, the free, uh, the free bet at first, and then you just keep going and you just keep sucking all your money in from you. Because that's why I try to. That's why my new strategy has been to limit my trades, which is why I'm doing contracts that expire further out in date, because. I don't want to be trading as frequently because I know the more frequently you trade, the more likely you are to lose to the market. So I want to try to limit my trades to being more precise and off of my levels than um, trying to scalp all the time. Because trying to scalp, you make some good plays here and there, but like you said, over the long run, you'll start seeing yourself get drained little by little from the hits you keep taking. So if I can limit my trades and limit my losses in the trades that I'm losing on and let my gains maximize, then that's the way I want to run it. I don't want to be trading too, too much anymore. I'm more of a long-term investor anyway. Trading for me, it was new during the pandemic. I picked up into trading because before that, my mindset was pretty much set on just investing long-term and building up the portfolio. Yeah, I see with the, because I see that being a thing that you can capitalize off of. If you have the right disciplines and right strategies, trading can be very lucrative, but you got to have those disciplines and strategies. You know, you can't treat it like a gamble. Yeah, yeah. When you're in a trade, you got to be watching like a hawk unless you, um, unless you go up in the trade real early on and then you could just set a trailing stop loss and then you're good for the day. You know, because sometimes I go up like 30% in the trade and I just put a trailing stop loss of 10%. So if it pulls down to my profits going down to 20% and then it'll automatically sell for me. But if it runs up and it goes up 60%, it'll let it run. But if it pulls back down to 50% from the 60% gain, then it'll sell right there for me. So once you're up a certain percentage, you can put that trailing stop in and then you don't have to be stuck watching the market all damn day. I know you could do that on each trade. Yeah, I got pushed along. I just got off the market. I got pushed along. But I don't do contracts. I'm trying to get into contracts. Yeah, I think um, 
E trade, you can do trailer stop. Remember when you seen that there was like low contracts? That what kind of contracts? Like if I put like fifty dollars in, you know what I'm saying? I can get a contract on. If I gotta go to like five hundred. No, no, yeah, you could get fifty dollar contracts for sure. Even on Webull, when you look at the spy contracts, like I'm on Webull right now. Let me see. If you open up Webull right now, let me open it up real quick. You can see contracts on SPY. That's one of the short end contracts I called out earlier. I said if you want to get in a lower end contract, you could get in on the, I was saying the four, the four twelve call, which is fourteen dollars a share right now. I mean fourteen dollars a contract. So you could probably grab like two or three of those contracts if you got fifty dollars. You know what I'm saying? AMD calls are green, unlike take profits. Yeah, he's ready to run. Get him out of there, huh? <laughs> Let me, let me look at the chart and see how close we are to 95. Let me see. Oh, yeah, you're getting close to that resistance. <laughs> you're getting close to that resistance, Vic. It was down this morning. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. I'm waiting. It's probably like it's about to pick up momentum. I got confidence. I'm holding this. <laughs> if you can uh, down. AMD rallied a lot this morning though, so that's the only thing that makes me worried about AMD. It rallied heavy and early. Between between me coming on this morning, I don't know, half an hour ago, it was down my my calls, but now I'm up. Yeah. Uh, AMD got like a three percent uh, daily moving average. That's why I was telling you, he got he got some room. Trust me, I can see AMD do it. <laughs> yeah, listen. All I know is that they got a resistance on AMD has a resistance at ninety five oh eight. And then the next resistance up is 97.21. So if you could get above 95, or if you see it really just push right through 95.08, then yeah, you could definitely hold that. But at 95, if you start seeing like some little chop action up and down, then you probably want to get out. But um, if I catch this momentum, you should be okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so like I was telling Relax, I was trying to tell him there's cheaper contracts on SPY. You get them joints. Um, look at the one-day contracts. There's joints that expire tomorrow, April April 11th. And you could see the contracts on there. You'll see uh, the 411 or 412. You could get... If you could get a 410, even better. But... The further out the money you go, the more volatile is going to be and the less chance of profit you have. So that's why I was saying 410 will be even better. But right now, if you got the 411 at $28, you could get each contract for $28 right now. So those cheap contracts are out there, man. You could, you could, I could find $5 contracts. <laughs> it's just how volatile and risky they're going to be. They're going to be high risk because they're so cheap. Depending on the company you're looking at, because some companies have cheap contracts just to start. Like, um... If you look at a company like Bank of America, Bank of America contracts are expensive. AMD is cheap. Yeah, AMD is pretty cheap too on the contract. So it's just the way you can see if a company is going to have cheaper contracts, look at the stock price. If the stock price is pretty low, it usually means uh, the contract price isn't going to be low as well. If it's underneath $100, the contract price is probably not going to be too crazy. But if it's a really volatile, high volume traded stock, then it could still have expensive contracts. But usually con companies that trade underneath a hundred dollars, their contracts, individual contracts aren't too expensive. Even Apple has decent price um, contracts. You could get an Apple contract. You could get like a one, you could get like a $165 call right now on, on Apple that expires in four days. You could get that for $36. That may not actually be a bad play that I'm saying it out loud. <laughs> yeah, I'm in Apple. I end up taking it. What Apple call you get? 62.5 for a dollar yeah I got two of them you called them what price you catch it at uh, a dollar <laughs> a dollar right where it's at right now I might jump in on that one with you Tim I like that I like that I like that play especially because Apple pulled back this morning and like yeah, it's 2.5 for this week Apple could go back up to 164.05. I'm going to jump in the Apple call with you. I'm going to jump in that one. I like Apple. 
I really don't like Apple. I don't like trading Apple. I like Apple as a long term investment, but I really hate trading Apple. <laughs> now nah, I'm thinking twice. So that every time I get into Apple, nothing goes right. <laughs> It does. It really does. But every time I get to Apple, bro, every single time, <laughs> without fail, bro. Yeah, mine's not so lucky there. Um, the market was shooting up and Apple was going the other way. Going the opposite direction. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so. Nah, I think I'm just going to stick on my spy. Yeah, <laughs> Apple, you can have fun over there. I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not about to mess with Apple. So, all right, on the candlestick before this, where we had this good push up on SPY, it had 106,000 buys, 45,000 sales, and we had, um, let me see, a difference of 60,000 to the upside. Right now, on this candlestick, we got 42,000 sales to 33,000 buys. So, it's still. Pretty low volume compared to last candlestick. The sales are pretty much in one alignment. Well, sales are above what they did on last candlestick now, but the buys have slowed down. I think this is just a little resistance right here. I think we're going to keep pushing up. Now, when yeah. we get around 408, I don't know. Every, um, if you look on the five minute, mm -hmm. every three bar down that we had, we um, pushed up, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, we're in the second bar of this one right here. Mm -hmm. So we should, yeah, probably have one more of us sell off and we should bounce if they want to play Texas. So yeah, yeah, we should bounce around 11-ish, hopefully. That's when you want to see the buyers come in. We should bounce off 40660. Like, if we get down to 40660, that should be the bounce level. this link real quick make sure y'all um, share the space make sure y'all share follow the space retweet it appreciate the support make sure you guys viewing subscribe and follow share with your friends and family oh wrong thing So just based over the weekend, and they was um, they was talking about how to grow a financial account on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And it was some pretty good uh, insight and advice. So one of the things that kind of stuck in my head was uh, the algorithms on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So uh, certain posts on Twitter, they was pretty much saying like the algo can pretty much help you out as long as you kind of like stay keep it like on twitter so if you like posting content that tears you away from twitter like mm. say you know, your discord or say, mm -hmm. what type of tweets the algos doesn't like so it's not gonna um it's not gonna promote it as much opposed to you like making threads and stuff like that like content that keeps you on twitter it's gonna like promote that a lot more okay Okay, okay. Well, you said that was in the video you was watching? No, it was a Twitter space. It was breaking down. Oh, okay. Okay, that's inside the Twitter space. Yeah, advice on how to grow and maintain a, a financial Twitter account. So it was like a bunch of traders in there, uh, analysts, and things of that nature. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. Yeah. I found that pretty uh, interesting. I mean, it makes, it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. 
you know, especially even with the timing, the timing of the day that you send out a tweet and all that kind of stuff, I know that has a certain impact on how many people, how many people it touches. So that's my guy, Durkio, man. Durkio is supposed to be my marketing magician, man. He got to be on top of all this for me. <laughs> but. Yeah, I know he stopped training for a little bit. Yeah. I don't blame him for that one, though. <laughs> no, the market will do that to you. Let's see what the news is talking about really quick. I got a big ass bearish block. It was crazy. This probably from that gap. That's from. I'll show you a picture of what I'm looking at. that third red bar all right spy shake it off now oh we got what news came out i don't know i already lost that you gotta tweet it first to share it don't you yeah yeah you gotta tweet it to share it in the space yeah Pretty decently priced contracts too. AMD. God damn this. AMD, you got contracts that expire in four days. A few contracts that you could get. AMD calls, you could get a hundred dollar call right now for thirty four dollars. Uh, Let's see, I got my mic. Mike, you can see the six percent off. Alright, hold on. Yeah, I see you posted it up top now. That's what I'm that's what I see from the spot right now in five minutes. See that big ass barrier block you just rejected. Where you get that so block from? Um what is this? That's a, a fair value gap. That's a strategy I've been working on. It's called F B G. Strategy. Is that a indicator on trade view? Yeah, it's this guy named Lux Algo. He, I ain't gonna lie, man. F E G. Let me see. Oh yeah, F. This is a fair value gap by Lux Algo. So that's why I be using it. Like, um, that's why I'm always playing puts in the spot because of this in, this damn indicator. <laughs> really. Fair Anytime value. I like a big rejection on these blocks constantly that's where I grab puts at and uh, the thicker that blocks get no the thicker the block the, the heavier the rejection the heavier the resistance is yeah so that's why that block is so thick right now because we haven't broke above it yet but as it start pushing up you'll see it like start to uh, get thinner and thinner mm, okay uh. Okay, I like, I like, I like. Listen, man, the more cheat codes, the better. Give me all the cheat codes to the game, all right? <laughs> <laughs> it's called fair value gap. Get, um, get, uh, he has a volume profile set. 
that shit was real. That's the thing I was trying to show you a while back, but that shit was like fifteen dollars. But he has a free version that he made himself. Yeah, man, you can't fan the caters out here. It's a free world. People don't know this shit. It's a free world. People don't want to pay for nothing. Everything should be free. Even if they're value drop, I think those cost on a lot of other platforms. But that's what I said, man. That guy Jordan, he looked out. What's his name again? Lux Algo? Algo. Check out all his videos. That's what I'm about to do. I'm typing his name and see what he got on. (laughs) I got like five. But this one I use the most. I got a, you said volume profile? Yeah, volume profile. It's like where the most volume is at on the spot on a certain price. So let me look at it for today. How about it's volume like, footprint? What does that one do? I gotta look at it. I gotta see. They got a store somewhere. I don't think I ever mess with that one. So the volume profile for today is four oh nine. Very hot, heavy. That's where the most volume is at today. Where do you see the volume profile? The, the volume. It's like basically one solid line that goes across a certain price and pretty much tells you that's where the most volume is at. That like light blue line? Yeah. The dotted line? Like this one here. So, really, it, it's kind of like a magnet in nature, though. Anytime we go low it, that kind of expects to play well. Calls to the trend spike up to it, and if we're above it, then you could play puts if you have you know some zones up there back to that level. But it's supposed to act as a uh, magnet on the entry day. Yeah, I don't see it on the spy when I type in the spy, nothing, no, nothing comes up. Mm, let me see, it's showing up. Oh, there you go. I see it now. I just didn't see. I got so many levels, and that's what it is. <laughs> it was like right near one of my levels, so <laughs> it's like blending in together. And you uh, see how Spy reacted to it in the five minutes last week? You saw how we just like ping pong. Anytime we got above it, we came down. Anytime we got below it, we came right back, back up to it. Uh huh. So yeah, that's the level I was looking at. Our four hundred eight seventy is where I wanted to get out. He got his level set at four hundred nine oh seven. So. There's that three bar down. Now we trying to yep. Now we trying to pull back up. Yeah, I see it now. We about to engulf that red candlestick. I think so too. Yeah. And that's gonna cross us over to green on the 15 minute MACD. Yes, sir. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. He's back to that gap, bro. Right. I say. I'm definitely shutting that down. <laughs> That gap down, right? That we took that little gap down. It's a yeah. small gap down. It's like four, yeah, four away seventy six. That puts us right back at my level. So mm-hmm. I think that. And that's right top of the uh, order block now. That bear is blocking that view. Yeah, let me pull the block back up. Let me get the block back up. Oh, we got one more screen of indicators to put together now. Okay, I like these combinations, <laughs> man. I like. Uh, I might have to get trade view plus. Like now. Nah. <laughs> Some good stuff. Oh man, if I can find a free version, I'm not touching that. I'm not touching that. Let me see. But yeah, I want the fair value gap with uh, fibs and then the magnet up in here. Volume profile. Mm-hmm. I use the field zones too. Those field zones are pretty accurate, but they just supply the main zone. It's the same, pretty much just a fair value gap. It's showing the same exact zone, honestly. So that's how I know, like, it's heavy or um, in that area of supply, I would say. So we got a little break. Hold on, Phil, I got questions. <laughs> oh, what's up? Oh, okay, so I'm uploading this um, fair value gap to my 500. Spy on the five minute. Mm-hmm. So what what's it telling me here with this big um red rectangle we got? So <laughs> that is called a bearish order block. But if you watch it like lively, you'll see when we break that 
right now the the very bottom of that block right here is four oh seven forty. Mm-hmm. If we break above that, you'll see the block start to uh, uh, get thicker now. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the green blocks, I assume, of course, support. Support exactly. Yeah. These little ass lines on here, I guess, are just price level. Yeah, those little green lines are like little buyer areas. Areas mm-hmm. that uh, the buyers come in. Yeah, but you, as you can see, the buyers aren't strong at all. You'll see some bigger blocks than that. Mm, okay, What's so. your um, Caleb Zone indicator? That's supply and demand. Oh, yeah, that acts as uh, supply and demand. Yes. And that actually is showing. Yeah, you see that, that block within the block? The uh, more transparent one behind that one. No. Uh, on that screenshot that I sent. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the work. Caleb. That more transparent rectangle in the background. Mm-hmm. So that's the supply zone that I'm watching. So if we could push uh, above the bottom of that rectangle, that's the level you could expect it to get up to. Is it um Caleb supply and demand zone straight up Caleb? Yeah, Caleb and. Uh, Caleb supply and demand zones. Thank you very much, Phil. Yes, sir. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, we into a buy trend now. Yeah, three minutes is into. Oh, Apple moved it. Hold on. <laughs> Man, Apple started moving. I'm sure it did. Oh, that's so option flow coming in on Apple. It's starting to break through that zone. 421 calls, 165. 414 calls, 162. Okay. Yeah, I just got more of the uh, spy calls. I didn't. I wasn't messing with Apple no more. Yeah, I'm bringing it. Apple's broken my heart too many times. I'm gonna keep that in the back. I got some spot calls with you. Okay. You put background thing. You can't really take off to do what they just got. Back to four now. Okay. Let's look at some news articles for today. Let's go through the news real quick. See what's happening. All right. We find some nice support. If you still see the fair value. Those little green blocks are starting to come in, and the um, and buyers just picking up. I don't see no green Stop. blocks, but I see it, the red getting smaller. Yeah, it's neither one. It'll pretty much tell you the same thing. But on the five minute, I see a little green border. No, oh, yeah, I see. And yeah, looking on the five minute, that's why I just went to the five minute. So you could expect some support right here. Come on now, let's go. Let's take off. Nice little three bar up. Just Let's take to, off. Just uh, trying to. Relax. You jumping any contracts with us or you just watching? I'm watching the contract guy. Uh, the process is popping up on there. You need the help getting the what process of a buying contract? I'm going to follow you on Discord. Okay, okay. Yeah, as long as you know how to do the purchasing of the contract, set your limit price and all that kind of stuff, then just listen out for the price levels we call out and try to get in at those levels or get out before we hit those price levels. So, like, on the way up, if you're trading a SPY, you want to get out your contract. If you buy a car, you want to try to get out before 408.72, range. You want to get out right around there. Um, yeah, but... If you get a contract, just shout it out. Let us know, and we can help you out. Uh, let's see what they're talking about on CNBC real quick. So, you know, we definitely think, quote, bonds are back, uh, and they and they should be part of a, an investor's portfolio. You know, even though everything sort of sold off together last year, including bonds and equities, you know, we think that uh, diversification benefits coming back this so, year. You know, we definitely Tiffany Wilding, thanks for joining us. Pimco's North American Economist. Appreciate it. We're going to regret not racking up on bonds when they are paying out these high, crazy percentage, huh? It's late for that. I barely get it. No, you look at it, you're like,
back then. New joints was at five percent. Now they at three point two already. Like goodness gracious. <laughs> Yeah, I locked in a few though. I bought some bonds. I bought a few. I got Jared to buy a few too. I remember I was pushing the bonds heavy in here at one point, like telling people I got to get them bonds. I didn't with understand them. them when you were here. I, I didn't understand it. Yeah, it's like you just locking in guaranteed gains essentially, you know? <laughs> Shit, that's to be playing with contracts pretty much. <laughs> yeah, it's like you locking in guaranteed gains. Contracts. You just got to hold it for a certain period of time with bonds. Like, that's the only thing with bonds. You have to hold it until expiration for you to get that full percentage yeah, return. Yeah, that's why I call it. Yeah, it's like, it's like a stake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like staking in the coin or something. Right, right. And they're like, we're going to give you back 5%. Staking. That's all it is. That's it. That's it. But it's the, you're staking in the, into the U.S. government. Shit, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. They guarantee. They don't. They never have defaulted on payments for bonds before. So it's zero risk. It's literally just do I have the patience to wait that time or am I going to need this money in the next six months? You know? Yeah. Let me look at the buying yields right now. Let me pull that up. Because now I'm excited to talk about bonds. Let's see. Current treasury yields. Let's see what it's coming in at. Hey, 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 now, hold on. What's going on here? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Now look at this chart real quick. All right, y'all. So, call out right here. Hold on, let me refresh my screen. We got some bonds you could get with uh, government bonds that you could get that's gonna pay over five percent. You wanna know which one it is? You said with five percent? Yeah. You wanna know which one you gotta get? Something that high. Close, close, the four month. That was a good call, bro. Uh, okay. and you know what's you know what's crazy is that the shorter term bonds in a in a healthy market, in a healthy functioning economy, the shorter term bonds are supposed to be much lower yields than the high, longer term bonds. Right, right. The fact that our short term bonds are producing such high yields and our long term bonds are, are producing less of a yield, that means the um it's causing uh an inversion, yield curve inversion. Yeah, that curve inversion. And it's getting deeper. A recession could be six months. Yeah. Yeah. And it's getting deeper. That means this is the inversion is getting deeper. And with all the things I'm hearing about the US dollar and the value of it, I can understand why the short term uh, bonds will be paying higher interest because they need money now. <laughs> they need money right now. And they want to pay high interest for it, for you to give your money to the government so they can handle and do things they got to do. And it's costing more to do things. So right now, the four-month bond is at 5.07%. You can make 5% on your money in four months if you want to wait four months. You're in 4% all the way up until one year. Once you go to two year, well, go ahead. What you say? I said, I said it's a good idea, especially if you compound it and make a plan. 
Right. You could buy these bonds every week. You could buy, you could, you could comp. <laughs> Let me see. I think the limit, and I don't think nobody here got that much money. I ain't trying to shit on them, but I, I think the most you could buy in a year is like $10 million worth of bonds. Like, I don't think we're hitting that limit right now. Not yet. You know, if I had that money, best believe I would have maxed it out. <laughs> I would have threw ten million into bonds at the beginning of the so year. With bonds, are you do you still get that uh, percentage gain in value from it going up as well? Is that the fact? Do you get a percentage? No, whatever bond you buy, it's the rate you get it at. That's why they do these auctions like every week. You could buy bonds. Some bonds go on auction every week where you could rebuy the bonds for like another six month bond. Or you're going to be repurchasing a bond from someone else who's already hold it. I'll take my 2% right now, and you got to hold it to maturity to get another 2.5% on it. You understand? Mm. So there's a secondary market for bonds. That's why people resell their bonds and try to make quick flip money off of it, especially people mm -hmm. that hold longer bonds. But um, if you can't resell them for a higher value or... Like if you can't, yeah, if you can't resell them for a higher value, then you're asked out. That's why the banks were messed up because they bought all these bonds that only had one and a half percent interest on them, and nobody wants to buy that from them. Like I'm not buying that from you. I can get a bond right now that has five percent. Why would I buy a bond from you that has one and a half percent interest on it? How much I'm gonna pay you for that? How much are you gonna? How much of a discount are you gonna give me on this? You better sell that bond to me for <laughs> eighty percent off if I gotta hold this thing for thirty years. You know, so that was the big issue with the banks. And I see this 5% uh, yield as, like you said, if you hold it for a shorter period of time, you could resell it on a secondary market. You're not forced to hold it to hold to expiration to get your 5%, but that's the best method I see. That's what I see, to guarantee yourself 5%, unless you could find some sucker on the secondary market that's willing to overpay or something. But I think it's best to um, take advantage of these short-term yields while they're in, in play. And you look at it, and people look at it and say, oh, on $100, that's only $5 on my $100, right? But you're thinking in a smaller term. Think about now if you're, um, let's say, if you're putting in, people that are putting in, like, six figures into bonds, because that's how bonds trade. Bonds, I think bonds actually, oh, shit, I got to talk to my sources. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the bond market has more um, cash flow in through it than the stock market, I believe. Let me see. The bond market versus stock market. Yeah, I've heard of that as well. Because that's because because of these guaranteed returns. So that's where the real big money is going to go. Okay. I could risk my money in the stock market trading or I could guarantee myself this small percentage return and I'll just keep compounding it over years and years and years or six months bonds or one month, however you want to play it. I could just guarantee that uh, return on my money even though it's small, I could compound this. Versus playing the stock game where I'm taking more of a risk, but I have more of a chance of getting more of a gain, but I have to take a higher risk. I can end up losing all my money. People with a lot of money don't want to risk losing their money. That's one of the best things about, I learned about people with wealth. It's like, you got to have a good off, you got to have a good defense. Like, they play great defense, people with a lot of wealth. That's how they retain their wealth and don't blow it all. Because when you get more money, more things come up for your money to be sucked into. So you got to learn how to play defense. Want to see this 407 30 hole? Like, you see a sell value gap on the stock market for the stock market? No, I didn't even see it. Hold on. Yeah, bonds in America are valued at 40 trillion compared to less than 20 trillion for the domestic stock market. 40 trillion, twice as large, twice as large. <laughs> As the stock market is the bond market, and that's for a reason. Really? Yeah, I mean, the they got exposed to that. The only uh, uh, exposure I got to bond was actually trading back stuff, but I traded back like TLT and stuff like that. Okay. Like that. Okay. 
Yeah, man, let's make it a goal. Let's. I want. I'm gonna put that in the Discord. I want everybody instead of buying a stock this month or next month, let's get a bond. I want everybody to get a bond. Grab a bond. Get. Only for the yeah, and get used to the process of going through and what it takes to buy the bond and what it looks like. Cause they have it before, like when my mom used to get them for me when I was little. The bonds used to be paper bonds, and you had to keep the paper and mm-hmm. and go take mm-hmm. it, exchange it at the bank yeah, and all this. You know, yeah, a little five dollar, fifty dollar bonds that gonna be worth. Mm-hmm. You know, you pay twenty dollars, but it's gonna be worth fifty dollars when you go trade it into the bank at this date. You know, so I used to have those, but now it's electronic. Now you create an account, and it's an electronic account, and you can like just have your bond stored in your account in your wallet. You know. And I think they're going to transfer this into the blockchain. If you ask me, they're going to put the whole bond market on the blockchain. Watch. I guarantee, I will guarantee it. They're going to do that. They're going to put the entire bond market onto the blockchain. So my, my question with, um, I don't know, Fed now or digital currency, can they still print money? Um, I think that if you go into the digital currency, the value, the, the printed mm-hmm. money is going to be a whole separate entity at that point. I think they're going to have to separate the two. Like, you could take your your dollars and put them into the digital space. And I think the longer you hold your dollars, the less they're going to be worth in the digital space. So people are going to be convinced or pushed to convert their dollars into this Fed now system as soon as possible. Because the longer you hold your dollar, the, the system that they have in place may devalue your paper money. I don't know. We'll see what they make that as far as the announcement. You know, and when they when they go to push that initiative, what they're going to do with paper money and how they're going to address it. And then I'm pretty sure it's going to be something about going green and cutting paper and and reduction of that. So they're going to tell everybody they should just relinquish having paper money and just go into the digital asset. And, I'm, and it'll be ushered in. I'm sure it'll be ushered in. I don't know how long it's going to take to do that, but I know I think by July of this year, the Fed now system is going to be active. I had pulled up the website last time I was in here. The Fed now. I was on their website. <laughs> Have y'all seen the website? I'm gonna put I'll put the link up to the website. Wouldn't that make the dollar more volatile? Uh, what they're trying to do is make the dollar less volatile, actually, because they want to put it into digital form. And they're going to tie it like how we used to be on the gold standard right now. We're on no gold standard. So right now, it's really just uh, it's like a credit system we're running off of. Like, okay, you're basing this off of America's credit, you know, and we could pay this off. We trust America to pay this off. Not that it's backed by any kind of commodity or asset. It's backed by the trust of the American government. So what they're going to do when they go digital, what I assume they're going to do is they're going to start as a country – Countries around the world are going to accumulate. I feel like the only resource outside of natural resources, if you're not a country that naturally has a lot of natural resources like Africa, you can't back your currency with your natural resources because you don't have enough. So what they'll start doing, they'll start saying, we're going to back our natural, they're going to back the U.S. dollar with the amount of Bitcoin that the U.S. owns. And then you're going to see the U.S. come out and say that they own X amount of thousands of thousands of Bitcoin, a million Bitcoin. And they're going to back the value of the American dollar using that stable as its, as, its, as its stability. Because outside of that, they will have to do it with a natural resource because that's what the rest of the world is starting to do. They're starting to say, oh, oh Saudi Arabia, Brazil, Iran, they're all starting to, and China, they're all starting to say, we're going to unite and we're going to create an economy within ourselves to add value to our currencies. And then the individual countries are coming out and saying that now we're not going to depend on the U.S. dollar we're going to back our dollar with the value of the the resources we have in our land. And a lot of countries have a lot of resources. Some, some places have a lot of resources in their land, and that's going to give their currencies tremendous value. So the only resources I think America really has as far as natural resource, I really don't, I haven't really heard too much about what we produce here. But I know we have a little bit of oil, but I don't think that's going to be enough. So I think we're going to use Bitcoin as the stability, as the foundation. And that's what's going to cause Bitcoin to skyrocket to all these crazy crazy prices that everybody predicts Bitcoin to go to. Oh, one coin is going to be a million dollars for a coin, like Kathy Woods keeps saying. And someone like her is not saying that for no reason. She has an inside scoop. She knows. She sees certain things that are going on. She hears certain conversations. So that is essentially what I think will skyrocket the value of Bitcoin. If they say Bitcoin is going to be the... Um, 
commodity in which we base the value of the U.S. dollar off of, and that's it. Bitcoin at that point is going to go out the fucking roof. You see other countries try to do it. I think like Ecuador, Venezuela, all them saying that their national currency is Bitcoin now, and that's what... So a little smaller countries have started to do it already. Once America does it, that's it. The value of Bitcoin is going to skyrocket. But the thing is that the American government has to have possession and ownership over a certain reserve amount of Bitcoin. So how are they going to get that ownership? Right. So how are they going to how are they going to get all this Bitcoin? They got to buy a lot of coin, a lot of coin. Or they're going to tell you that you got to exchange your Bitcoin for USD coin in order to spend money within America. And then that's how they'll start slowly but surely taking Bitcoin from everybody. So I gotta see. I'm interested in how it's gonna pan out. It's gonna be very interesting. I'm about to pin the link to um, this Fed Now site, though. It takes you on this map, and it um, it takes you through all the features of Fed Now and what they're gonna be implementing, what they're gonna be doing. So when y'all get a chance, I appreciate it. I appreciate the insight. Thank you. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin it up right now. So. When you have a moment, go through that site and see what their whole plan is. But I know by July of this year, that system is coming out. So, it's coming. It's happening. It's yeah, going. No time. No time. July, right? July. Trying to basically, like, get all out there. How many contracts you got? Just one? Yeah, yeah just one. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They can do it. Just go to Sparkle's and listen. Yeah, if we break over like, uh, ninety four, I would say like if you could, if we if we even get ninety four fifty, I would get out there. Cause right now we kind of close. I don't know what percentage you up, but I would just sell. What percentage are you up on the contract? Hold up, let me look. Let me look. The twenty percent. Yeah, I was, <laughs> you know me, man. I'll be about it. <laughs> I think about twenty and run. I what what am I playing with it for? Another maybe if it goes up that another forty, thirty cents, how much more are you gonna get on your contract? Maybe five percent. But if that joint reject, you're gonna be sick if you end up going from twenty down to ten percent and gain. But it, this is a crucial moment. The only thing I see is the it has support, like uh, Tim said, it has a support block at right around ninety three seventy. And it could bounce off that support, but I'm looking at the 15 minute MACD is weakening, but the hourly and four hour are still in strength. So, but the daily is weak on AMD, the weekly is weak on AMD, but the monthly is getting stronger. So, with all that put together, it looks like, and the five minute like is just starting to cross down to the red on um, on AMD. So you could wait and see if this is a fake out and then it's going to start to break out for the second half of the day from here. Or you could lock in the gains and look for another contract maybe to get in on, you know, that has less capital that you could put less capital into and still <coughs> uh, benefit if it pushes to the upside. But you could probably catch it on the pullback. If you catch the pullback, that level that Tim got on the um, on that indicator at ninety three seventy would probably be a good spot to jump back in. If you really wanted to stay in the trade, but you know what I find really difficult day trading? What? RSI as an indicator. Oh, the relative uh, strength. Yeah, I do not use that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me with it. We got to get to four. We got to break 407.80 to get out this block. All right. So 407.80. I think we could do it. I think we could do it, though. I think we're about to do it. And that's just, that's nothing but sellers here all in that block. Yeah. So, so the more we push it lower, the more they're left to go back to it. Yeah. I think we could get 408. The more they see rejection, the more they're add on. That's why. I the more you see the uh, the block get rejected, the thicker it gets. That's because sellers are adding now to that block. Hmm, okay. Going in this position. What's going on, 
the chat first. My guy, what's going on, bro? Chilling. How you feeling today, man? Uh, I'm just watching right now. Yeah. I ain't really jumping into nothing. Yeah, it's one of those days. Off. Like, I'm in the call right now. Tuning in, G. Mr. A and B. Right? I ain't, I ain't even jumping in B. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, what I did was last week, yeah, I jumped on some AMC posts. AMC? Oh, okay. You went to the memes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to like, trying to see what's up with AMC, man. Cause they was talking like uh, good about it last week, so I was like, man, let me do it like a long call on it to see what's gonna do this, like this following up week. Mm, okay. How it is? Uh, it's great so far. Um, like, down like ten percent. Oh, okay. Oh well, yeah, from the close out this morning, right? Yeah. Did you add on to it? Nah, I was trying to see if I, it could dip again so I could, like, add another position or two. Mm-hmm. Because right now it's on the rise. I think we can see some nice little uh, upsides to it. Like, you, you want to see this gap fill. And uh, it's probably, I'll tell you the word, every morning. Yeah. <laughs> Nvidia just hit a resistance at 274.27. Apple is catching support now. Yeah, man. Nice little upside. You know, it's time to kill this level we at now. 407.80. 407.80. Come on, Spy. Push out. Push out. You can do it. I believe. Yeah, NVIDIA's at a resistance level right now. That's why it's struggling at 274.27 is resistance. If it breaks above that, you could go to 279. Yeah, that's great, man. AMD is going to struggle at 95 for sure. But I think you want to move on to the next level. You speak for half hour, my man. <laughs> <laughs> You know what people were sleeping on, and I just seen. I'm just reading an article about this now, and I and I had a vision of this. I had a vision. I had a vision that Apple in five to ten years is no longer even a major phone company. I had a vision of this, y'all. Apple is not going to be a dominant, dominant phone company in 10 to 15 years. I think they'll be still in the communications industry, but I think they're going to start to really infiltrate the, the medical field. I could see, like, I don't know why. I see, like, a lot of AI incorporated Apple products inside hospitals because it's already, you know, the white look and how hospitals are all white inside. I feel like Apple is, is going to fit right inside that, inside that market. And I think the AI, artificial intelligence, health industry, in the health industry is going to be adopted much more quickly than probably in some other businesses. I wonder if Microsoft is because they got the head of health care for it. So they got a pipe in there that's good. They got this whole dive into it. But it's like two years ago. Yeah, like you said, So it's saying Oracle has made a new partnership. Oracle just made a new partnership to move into the artificial intelligence space with its uh, partnership that it made with Cerna Medical Technology Business. And it said it's going to use the AI to test, I mean, it's going to use the develop AI tools that will focus on extracting information from clinical notes inside of electronic health records for the FDA's Drug Safety Sentinel Initiative. 
Cerner will work along with John Snow Labs on AI technology that will be used to explore the possible mental health side effects related to the asthma drug Montelukas and how machine learning and natural language processing can fill in gaps in data collection. That's what I'm saying. I think AI is going to infiltrate medical much quicker. Much, much quicker. I have family that work in hospitals and stuff, and they talk about how sometimes the infrastructure seems like archaic and how it operates because in order to get a patient's information, if that patient was ever hospitalized somewhere in the country, you should be able to have their information on what's wrong with them. Because when you find that person passed out, you don't know what's wrong with them, what condition they had. They said there should be a system where everybody's medical information is accessible to other hospitals on um, access on, on, on a drop of a dime, kind of like how it would be in a blockchain. There would have to be like a medical blockchain created where all that information and data is stored and secured at a high, high level because that's people's yeah. medical information. So we'll see. We'll see how that pans out. But I definitely see AI in, in medical. No, where is the piece that you put it? Did you put it in the chat? Let me see. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Where is it? Um, your inbox was there. Oh, you did? Okay, let me see. Let me see. Actually, I'll post it. I'll post it. Yeah, you could post it because I don't see it. Let me see. Oh. Oh, yeah, that shirt. Oh, okay, I see it now. I didn't, I didn't even see this. And you designed that with words. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, what application did you use? Because I see Mid Journey froze. Like, Mid Journey won't even let me on. Daily too, okay. Cause Mid Journey is acting funny now. Mid Journey is acting brand new. You know, they got some extra. They got some users now. They want to act like they can't support the service. Can't support anybody anymore. So unless you're a Plus subscriber, you can't make any. Or unless you have an account on them with them already, you can't make any new designs. But I saw a hack for that. I saw that people were using that to um, make certain things like, I guess, like wallpaper designs or or gift wrap designs. Like people were using the AI to come up with their own gift wrap designs and patterns, and they were just reselling them online. They said the lady had like 30,000 people start shopping in her store online because she was making all these patterns and designs for wraps and and gift wraps and wallpaper and she was just coming up with all these designs from AI you know yep not, not hours spent in a, a art school or any kind of design course wasted <laughs> it's a waste of time <laughs> oh people will still have appreciation for human made art though but it's gonna be uh I don't think we can beat AI for art because it knows what we like it knows how we think it's gonna be weird. Yeah, it's gonna. It is. It is. But I think of that sense, and then you gotta apply that to music. Like, are we gonna now have a computer generated music because we like the sounds it's able to create, and it has a uh, it has tapped into our understanding and knows what lyrics we like to hear. Or, like, no, nah, I think certain things like music and art. I think that. The creator, like you said, you still had to have the input. You still had to know what to tell it. So I think it's going to get more creative in that aspect. Like we're going to get even more enhanced art from real, not people that can necessarily draw, but people that are good with their mind and creating imagery, descriptive imagery with their mind or their words. Those people are going to um, create some some bomb ass art going forward. 
And then you're going to have to copyright like the phrase or the, or the phrase that you use to create that art piece. That's going to be the copyright portion of the art now. It's like you're going to have to copyright what word you use or the exact phrase you use to make that piece of art. And then you could copyright that phrase and, and now it's your exclusive piece of art. They're going to have to put some law around that. I think they're going to have to definitely put a law around that. Like the Wild, Wild West. Yeah, it is. Right now, it is. Right now, it is for sure. Where's my block at? Oh, the block is being pushed through, Tim. We almost threw the whole block, Tim. Chopping our way through. It's like chiseling. I like this little indicator. <laughs> I like watching this little indicator. You see the little green ones forming as well? The support? Nah, I don't see no support forming on the 15, though. <laughs> I don't see no support. We still trying to get through this big red block. <laughs> if we start showing support on the 15, then I'm going to get really excited. But yeah, we only got one back at that 40% I'll take one off to the video game long time check. I just jumped down to AMD. I'm gonna wait for it to pull back and then jump back in. You took your games, right? Smart man. Yeah. You definitely need to pull back better with the share contracts. Yeah, you definitely approaching that low, low, low day area. to take profit in expanded the whole floor of 730 for more attenuation just a little bit of sell off and then nothing crazy and for upside uh, 4780 that area Mike just mentioned clear that we can see some more upside mm -hmm. Still into a buy trend, pushing up above the midline on the overbought, oversold. Oh god, what the hell did I just click on? You have. Oh Tim, that's another thing. You gotta help me set up the uh, MetaTrader, man. I gotta get. I guess I gotta get with a brokerage. You said I gotta set up an account and all that. I think that's the next step I gotta do. Oh shit, you can't hear me. I got myself muted. I'm probably to myself. Mm -hmm. And Tim, that's another thing. I gotta get you to help me set up that MetaTrader account. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. I gotta put that into the Discord too, cause I'm gonna be calling out some forex pretty soon. So I can make everybody aware of the platform that I'm gonna be using. I gotta get the brokers. You gotta send me and let me know. Well, you ain't gonna, I'm gonna have you help me set it up because I want to know what brokers to sign up for and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I got that for sure. Yeah, so I put my um, top notch artwork in the gumbo chat. <laughs>
Just the merch. This is for my um my club gift. Nice, nice. That's what's up. And what's the uh what's the what's the platform you say you use again? Um, Bayla E two. It's if you go on um on I'm not AI, it's under chat GPT because like GPT three is the first tab and it's just Bayla. Open dot AI. Oh, it says generate any image possible. It's right here on the main page now. Oh, this is fire. <laughs> uh, it's like um, any tool, though. The more you use it, the better you get at it, and the closer the results will be to what you want, the more you use it. Yeah, and this is free, huh? I'm about to... after, after a bit, they'll ask you to, to buy some credits. <laughs> after, a couple, after they make you a couple pitches and get you into it, right? Get you hooked. First Van Gogh. <laughs> hey, I'm sure you could sell something off there for thousands. It depends on how Thou you what? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh man, people, I'm gonna make. <laughs> I'm gonna have some dope art in my house <laughs> to hang up on my wall. Shared in the space, my first Van Gogh. There we go. I pinned it up top. So I'm gonna highlight my picture. I painted the queen. <laughs> queen, queen nose, queen Beyonce. Does this sound like you can make art out of? I mean, art from the AI program or something. Yeah, it's the same thing he made his shirt from. It's the same program he made the shirt that he used to make his T-shirt. This is crazy. I just made a Van Gogh of Beyonce. And that shit. If I put more, I just put in a very basic description. If I go in more detail in the description, I know this picture will be fire. That's crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> All by yourself. No, no, no. Not no. Not a class in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't even paint that background if I tried. <laughs> oh man, the world is about to be something else. Something else. It's just twelve seven thirty. Yeah, we just put a double top in, it looks like, unless we reverse back up. What time is it? 11.54, too? Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that. Sorry about the bleed. I don't like that. Let me look at 
some other key things. Apple. Apple is still pushing. Microsoft hasn't crossed over to the green yet. All right, we still got some time. We still got some time. I'm about to bleed. Yeah. I'm feeling crazy right now. <laughs> Yeah, relax, y'all. Come on. What you trying to do? We worked hard for this. <laughs> nah, we have support at uh 407 four seven twenty five. We're like, yeah, four seven twenty five we should cast support. I'm not saying break down too much further past there. Spy, come on, let's get this back up. Shallow, what's going on? What's going on? How are you feeling today? Let me see you sneak in here. I'm excited. Now I gotta go play with AI pictures. <laughs> All right, we're still in the buy trend. What's causing this pullback right here? Looks like smart money is doing some selling, so institutions are selling a little bit right here. Can that AI art turn to F, uh, NFT? No, I don't see why not. If you know that how to, be, that'd be nice. If you know how to mint NFTs, then. I don't see why not. You can't make your own collection. Yeah. Like <laughs> it don't make no sense why not. So I think it's definitely sell off. Nah, mm -hmm. I doubt. Maybe it's fine with the sell off. Yeah. Let's see. This is the smart money selling right now. What just happened? Let's see CNBC. Someone <laughs> just announced. What the hell they say on TV? What did uh Jim Cramer just say? <laughs> Spending the FDA's approval of an abortion pill before another judge in Washington state issued a preliminary injunction that says essentially the opposite, giving the Biden administration time to appeal. Now some of the biotech executives are saying the initial decision to suspend approval could have big implications for the entire industry. CNBC's junior health and science are giving the Biden administration time to appeal. Now some of the biotech executives are saying the initial decision to suspend approval could have big implications for the entire industry. CNBC's junior health and science Oh, yeah, that's my switch. So where's the extra sound coming from? Yeah, man, I should have jumped in the uh, clips, man. Play myself. But it's okay. Let's see the volume on this. Smart money is selling heavy mm -hmm. right here. Caught up in this pullback though. Mm -hmm. Let's see. 60,000 sales to 45, 42,000 buys. It's not crazy, so uh, it's pretty low volume still. Oh, and this candlestick's about to close, yo. Yeah, this is that lunchtime candle, man. Yeah, don't get caught up in the lunchtime candle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get caught up in those. You could have definitely scalped and made a good little put play right here, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't feel too comfortable staying in that. I should have went in when that uh, confirmation came in on the sell button. What chart you was looking at? The five minute? Um, was it the five minute I was looking at? Nah, you know, I be looking at the one minute. The one minute. <laughs> I think came in early, bro. Yeah, they're coming too early. I think came in at 4760. <laughs> came in early, early. So get up out of there. Yeah, get up out of there. Save yourself. Like I said, it's not that much downward volume. It's just the fact that it's a. Uh, it's not much down volume. It's not much volume. 
to pull it down. Mm-hmm. That's what I don't like. It's not taking a lot of volume to pull the market back down. Yeah, it's not. It's not taking a lot of volume. This is only 28000 in favor of sales right now, and it's producing this big of a down candlestick. VIX is on our uh, upstream right now. Let me look at the VIX. That's something else good to look at. Let me look at this VIX. Yeah, that's kind of my shit right now. Oh, the VIX is still pretty yeah, low. The VIX. The buy order came in on the VIX. <laughs> nah, the VIX is still low. Uh, the VIX is going to find support at 1913, though. If I would have saw that, I probably would just. To get out, but 1913 is where VIX finds support. It's kind of got close to that level before it bounced. We got down to 1924, and then we bounce. But if you look at the if you look at the VIX from the weekend, the VIX has gapped up from it closed at 1839 and it opened. Today at nineteen thirty nine, so that's a big, that's a dollar gap up on the VIX. So I wouldn't be surprised if it fills that gap back down. You know how I feel about gaps. Gaps got to be filled. Yeah, and that's a big <laughs> yeah, gap that's up. Not gonna watch another VIX. Talking about the eighteen fifty, right? Yeah, that big gap up right there. Mm-hmm. So as expected, I'm gonna watch it run up and break back into it. Yep, fill the gap. That's it. You can bounce back up all you want after you fill the gap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, in 15 minutes, it's still, it's still got a sell on it. On the VIX. And the 15 is dropping now. On the second candlestick, the 15 is dropping. I mean, it was still down, but it was recovering. I needed to really get back above that 408 level for me to really recover. But if it breaks down 4660, then I'm going to get up out of that because 4660 should hold. Let's see who has earnings coming up. Earnings, earnings. Nobody. Oh, Tilray has earnings today. Oh man, I ain't hear about Tilray in a minute. Right? Tilray. Yeah, they have earnings today. Tilray. Let's see if they gonna beat earnings to this. And that's the. Upside. Let me ask you. Yeah. Who else is on here? That's it as far as the bigger cap. Tomorrow we got Albertsons and Carmax report tomorrow. Progressive on Wednesday on oh shit I said it's a Thursday mm-hmm. how is Thursday for mm-hmm. Thursday. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, sell orders can be on the tail on a one minute three minute and a five minute. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting on a fifteen minute. So according to the volume profiles, you should be expecting a spy bounce around here. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm watching AMD and it's not following yet. Yeah, I'm watching for a bounce right here too. And 
damn near almost had it in the same month close. Man, I'm pissed off this area. Come on, AMD. Oh, if they stop, but yeah, AMD could do it too. AMD had a good run. Uh, 93.70 area, but they're just not going to do it. Entry, three entry for close. Or the 93.70? Mm-hmm. 93 ish I don't think it's going to dip that low. Yeah, let's get more to like the 93.80 ish. Oh, six fifty five. Let's see a mixture of calls and puts on spy. Well, as far as large order flow, let me see some. What's smart money doing? Um, smart money right now on spy. They're still they flattened out and then they were selling again right here. That causing this secondary dip that we have right now. They pretty much been. They started selling at eleven forty five. Smart money. Mm -hmm. That's what I've seen. <laughs> they cashed out. Are they gone for the day? Man, yeah, no. Up the DC. Man, yeah, no buyers right here in this candlestick. It's all sellers. And why should you go through when they had a chance for that four seven, but on a put. Oh. Still breaking down. Uh, low of the day is at 406 flat is the low of the day. So let's see if we People break. People were talking about 404 in the day. What? Jeez. Yeah, I got 404 as a as a level on the downside. I sold some of my um my put. I mean my calls right here at this level. Let's cut the loss right here. Before we pull back some more. Five. Might be just a little, a little fake. Let's see. <laughs> the fake bounce. <laughs> <laughs> fake bounce, right. On the daily, though, we got support at 40. Well, on that indicator, the block indicator, the fair value indicator, it shows support at 405.60. So if you break down below there, that's why I'll shed the rest of my calls at 405.60 if you break down below that. And I'll probably reverse in the puts if we break down below 405.60. They took all day to push up that little bit and golf it in 20 minutes. <laughs> like, took all day, all morning for that push up and then engulfed immediately. 30 minutes engulfed. Shit don't make no sense. The way it was uh, respecting that, that block, though, that's what was taking time. Because they was projecting it like to the T on that push up. It almost got through breaking through it, and that's what caused this massive breakdown right before it broke through that block. It was about to break out of it. Massive breakdown. <laughs> they tell you the sellers are like sitting the most. Yeah, right there. Yep, they're sitting right there waiting, prowling. I don't see buyers on any chart, really, until 404. But yeah, we could bounce from here. I'm not too worried. Like I said, I'm still holding the long call, so let's see how those pan out. Yeah, I got two more buy zones right now. If you don't hold that shit, bro, I'm 
you know, doing your thing. Yeah, no, nah, at 404, I'm out for sure of calls. If I want to catch a put, if we get below 405.50, catch a put and ride that down. This 406.60 level is pretty strong. I think we're going to hold that. Let's see. We dipped down for a quick second below it, though. This candlestick could close above 406.60. I think we'll be okay. But the short term MACD is breaking down. The 15 minute was breaking back down. But it was really just off those two candlesticks. That was vicious selling right there. It was. Like really quick for a lunchtime hour as well, especially. And they said what they're going to do this quarter. What do I want to do with cyclicals? As I said, industrials weak, the weakest last week. Deer, they weaken. Deer down 10 and a half. United Rentals down 10. Cat down eight and a half, for example. You know, Steve's defining the market as not being realistic. I see the market as being very realistic. It's realistic about what's coming and looking ahead and seeing the weakness. Because the the attribution so far year to date to positive performance for the S and P is coming from a very small, narrow group of stocks that are quote unquote safe havens. And I'm not categorizing those stocks as safe havens. Tech, but you're talking that's about how, right. So you're talking about tech's been so realistic. The, the market not is the market. The market the market is messaging in a realistic fashion. This environment is not a good environment for earnings. This is not a good environment for the consumer. This is not a good environment economically. Therefore, this small basket of stocks, that's where we quote unquote want to hide out again. Oh. I don't agree with so that. So Kerry, then that maybe is that the only reason we're near forty one hundred on the S P is because of what's ha happened with big cap tech? No, it's not the only reason. Uh, however, that was uh, a, you know, a big sector that suffered last year. I mean, the average tech stock was down more than 20%, and the mega caps were down more than that. So I, I think there's both the rebound effect. They got hit hard, and so they're, you know, people are buying them. But if, if you look at, as an example, you know, if you looked at Alphabet, the stock is up, I think, 27% from its bottom. Um, it sells for 17 times earnings. Now, perhaps that earnings number, uh, that's forward earnings, is a little bit um, high, but maybe it's 18 times. It's a market multiple or below a market multiple, and that's true of a number of the tech names. So they were oversold Meta, as an example. It's up 138%. It still sells for below a market multiple. And you know, I'm not suggesting that everybody go run and buy tech. I'm just saying that they were an oversold group and an environment where cyclicals are going to trade down. And it looks like in, uh, interest rates are peaking, even if they haven't peaked exactly Exactly. growth stocks tend to outperform and those earnings can be more resilient and we know the companies keep talking about cutting costs so they're trying to preserve margins so you know I'm just trying to give the the um, argument slightly against Steve going to 3200 or 3400 I mean I think that is extreme and the market shouldn't be at that level if we are if we are bringing inflation down and interest rates are peaking at this point just to be clear, I didn't say 32, 34. I said 36. Oh, sorry. I said we're not going to go. But you like it to go there. Still it's still. <laughs> it's still what you said? Can I turn some star calls for your starter position? You put in the 408 call. Excuse me. Yeah, and the five minute, we in a heavy sell trend and potential for reversal, but that's on the five minute. I don't like making it at the five minute. The 15 minute was in the buy trend, like it.